In today's GSB Talks Digital, I am joined by Eva Yorston, founder and director of Content Boost in the United Kingdom. And today, Eva, we are going to talk about data-driven content marketing and the role of keyword research in developing a content plan. Now, you've been around content for many years. Uh, tell the listeners and the viewers um, a little bit about your experience and your business. Yeah, so um, I started my business straight out of university and um, that was as a virtual assistant. So I was offering a really wide range of services from, you know, copy typing to audio transcription um, and as well as uh, digital marketing services and uh, some research services as well. Um, but the way that I grew my business was through blogging. And um, ultimately, I decided that I wanted to niche down and specialize. And one of the services that I was doing on behalf of my clients was blog publishing. And I noticed that there was a, um, a real side benefit, you know, aside from saving the client's time, it also meant that it held them accountable to their publishing schedule by getting them to delegate that part of the process to me. So I decided to focus the entire business around that. Um, and now we offer content strategy and blog management services and just rebranded as Content Boost. So that's, uh, that's my journey. So yes, very much deep in the content, surrounded by content, live, breathe, eat, sleep it. <laughs> And I love the fact that you've taken your own advice and you've niched down. It's so important in the busy internet space. But can you explain um, about the concept of data-driven content marketing? Because, you know, in the old days, sometimes we used to have to do large surveys, sampling, um, and traditional marketing. But there's actually easier ways now to find out what your audience wants to consume in terms of content. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, data-driven content marketing is really just, as it sounds, quite a self-explanatory term, but um, it's really just the use of data to underpin your content marketing strategy. And I would say that generally the types of data that you're dealing with fall under two main camps. There's the data that goes into um, informing the creation of the content. And then there's the data that you use to measure how well that content has performed and how it has resonated with your audience. And it's really um, making sure that you're covering all your bases as far as the that data is concerned. Um, because I think people can get carried away with the, the fun and and creative side of creating content and sometimes maybe forget about the data side or conversely can get really bogged down in the data and kind of get stuck as to what they should do on the creative side so it's finding a balance between those two things. I have to admit I am totally guilty of the former getting carried away with content <laughs> creation. <laughs> I really have to have kind of pull myself up or have my colleagues pull myself up on that one. So when you're advising your clients on their content strategy, um, what approach do you take and where does that data-driven kind of process and that keyword research, what, what role does that play in the overall strategy? So um, when I'm sitting down with a client to talk about their strategy, we first look at why. So we're looking to define their objectives for why they're wanting to embark on their content marketing strategy. And so there's data that comes into that because we want, you know, it could be simple things like the business's financials, how, you know, their key performance indicators that allow you to then set the goals for what the content marketing strategy should achieve. So there's some data there. Um, and then there's defining your buyer persona. So um, you want to make sure that you're creating content that is going to strike a chord with your target customer. And so you really need to know who that person is. And I think, um, you know, there's potential to make a lot of assumptions there. You know, you might have a gut feel for who your customer is. And, you know, if you are like me and have started out as a one man band, then you, you know, you're the one dealing with your customers every day. Um, and as the business grows, you might still, you know, be in co regular contact with them, but it's always good to underpin that with some cold hard facts. So you might be able to extract some statistics about exactly who your uh, existing customer base are, um, where they're based, uh, what industry they're in, all these sort of things. Um, but then, you could go a little bit further and you could do um, polls on social media or, you know, little mini surveys that, um, that 
uh, look at your follower base. So the people who are not necessarily your customers, but who are in your immediate audience, who are consuming your content and following you on social media and getting a feel for who they are, um, because there may be a difference between them and your existing customers, or, um, you know, you may be able to spot trends about the ones who become customers and, you know, extract key data about that. And then you could go even further and look to gather some broader data from, uh, you know, industry wide or uh, demographic wide type data to um, really have a much broader understanding of who your potential customers could be. So those are the sort of things that go into the before stage of the content creation process. And then, yeah, you're quite right. Keyword research is a key part. So once you've done all of that bit, you're looking to brainstorm your themes and topics and the, the fun bit um, before you start creating your content. And I wouldn't necessarily say you want to restrict yourself by thinking about data at that brainstorming stage, um, because you want to be free to come up with different ideas and throw mud at the wall and see what sticks. But, um, but once you've kind of drilled down onto your key themes and some working titles and topics, then that's where you want to do some keyword research to make sure that you're using the same words that your customers are using in order to find that content on Google or on social media. Um, because if you don't, then, you know, you can do a certain amount of promotion, but ultimately people just won't find the content that you're creating. So all of your hard work will go to waste. Um, so that's the, the sort of, uh, as I say, the st strategic part of the process. Um, through our blog management services, we also do um, measurement of the performance of the content. So this is after you've created your content, you've published it, you've put it out into the world, you've promoted it via your email marketing system and social media and all the rest of it. Um, and now you want to look and see how well the results of that content match up to your goals. Um, and uh, so that's when you're starting to look at your social media engagement and your web traffic and things like that. So really there's, there's data throughout the whole process. And I think for a lot of um, businesses and marketers, it can be a bit of a, a scary sounding thing. You know, the, the data part of it sounds a bit technical and um, you know, it's maybe something they don't feel that they're that competent at, but actually, like you said, there's some really easy ways to, to gather data these days. You know, it's as simple as putting a poll on Facebook or, um, or you know, looking at your email marketing open rate or whatever it is so yeah um, I'm glad you took up um, the element of measuring success because I'm sure like me you bump into the cynics who say that content marketing is just a buzzword content marketing is dead it's just a waste of time and um, how difficult is that convince and convert stage of your business for you when you're trying to engage organizations and clients to embrace content marketing it can be tricky because you know what really what i need to say up front to a lot of clients especially if they haven't been doing any sort of content marketing already is that realistically you know you're you're looking at 12 months at least before you start seeing a tangible business result from the creation of that content but what you can be doing along the way is looking for indicators as to whether you're going in the right direction so some of the indicators that we look for uh, when we've published a new blog on somebody's website is obviously a spike in traffic um, but also things like time on site so how long is the average reader spending on the site reading your content if it's really short and the bounce rate is high then there's something wrong there. Either there's something wrong with the way that the content looks on the page or there's a technical problem or the content itself just hasn't really clicked um, with your audience. So even though you might be waiting a while for business result, you can, you know, as long as you're measuring things along the way and being realistic about what your expectations are. And I think that's the key is managing expectations of clients. Um, from the outset um, then there's uh, yeah there's lots of ways that you can you can tell whether your your money is um, being well spent I, I 
again, um, I love the fact that you mentioned that 12 months is probably a realistic time frame for people to expect a return on their content marketing. It is the long game. There are shorter games in terms of, you know, PPC social advertising, but content marketing is a long game. And I know in my experience, my blogging and, and podcasting has definitely paid off because people are watching, you're building up trust, you're building up authority. And by the time they get in contact, they've made their mind off. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, what is it? The zero moment of truth, you know, 70% of the buying decision is made before the, the customer even gets in contact with you yeah and it's so so true but um i mean i do think though that if the more content you're creating you could potentially see faster results um you know there's some clients that i have who really like to start slow <laughs> by producing like one blog a month <laughs> and it's like okay i understand you know there's budget constraints and all this kind of thing but you know for clients who are willing to put in the hard work and create three posts a week they're going to see results a heck of a lot quicker. So, you know, there is a bit of, um, uh, yeah, that does impact things a little bit if you're willing to create more content. But, you know, obviously that's not necessarily feasible for all businesses. So you went through in depth all the types of data that you can use in terms of developing your strategy, but also measuring success. Let's now talk about the different types of content. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, they will throw up different pieces of data and metrics in their own right. If we compare blogging to video to visual storytelling to email marketing, what are you seeing now in your business or what are you doing more of? Are there any trends? Um. Well, I mean, obviously the, the rise of video is, has been meteoric and I don't think, you know, businesses can ignore that anymore. Um, I think even if it's as simple as putting uh, some videos on your website, not necessarily creating them on a regular basis, but having videos on your website, then, you know, that could be increasing conversion rates by up to 80%. Um, so, you know, I think video is definitely somewhere to pay pay attention um, but really blogging's not going anywhere um, it, people still turn to google to search for things and yes videos come up in google but ultimately it's text-based content that is um is still going to dominate search engine results and even with voice as well uh, voice search it's still at the moment text-based uh, articles that come up in voice search so it's um the the big the big formats are still there but i think um somewhere that uh customers or you know, my customers businesses can spend a bit more time planning is around how they're going to repurpose their content um from the outset so you know the they might focus on one key medium as being their their place on the internet, whether that's their blog or their YouTube channel or their podcast, but also thinking about, okay, how can I turn that bit of content into other bits of content? And I think that's um, a big opportunity for a lot of businesses and organizations. Um, so for instance, we are sitting recording a podcast, we're doing it on video. So you could, you know, publish it as both a podcast and a video. You could then chop it up into little bits to put on social media, either to promote the blog, the, the podcast in its own right, or as little snippets and tips, just, you know, as social media content. Um, and then you mentioned that you're going to turn it into a blog and probably embed that podcast and video on the blog itself. And then once you've got a series of blogs, you can turn those into an ebook. You might create a checklist to download within the, the, the blog. So, you know, from one piece of content you can cover a lot of bases um, and that does take time and effort but um, if you're clever about the way that you plan and create your content from the beginning um, then there's potential for it to reach a lot further so yeah I would say pick your favorite medium and stick with it and do it consistently but also be clever about how you are repurposing it. Okay, so final few tips from you, but you've given loads of takeaways in this interview. So thank you for that. No if problem. somebody is setting out to review their content plan right now, they're listening to us and going, gosh, I don't do that. What is their starting point? I think, well, their starting point is probably to um, revisit their, uh, their goals and their buyer persona, maybe to start with. So 
is the content that they are creating actually uh, you know, related to these goals and is it focused on the buyer persona that they have developed? Um, because you know, if they've been creating content for a little while, sometimes you can kind of veer off without really realizing it. Or um, when you go back and look at the, um, the data of how your content has been performing, you might realize that actually you thought that you were creating content that was, you know, really useful and helpful to your target audience, but actually the stats say that it's not connecting with them. So revisit the content that you're creating and how the, that how that's tying in with your goals um, and then I would also say uh, look at how you're titling your different pieces of content in terms of your keyword research um, so that's another big pitfall for a lot of um, content creators is that they come up with a sort of clever title or something kind of whimsical or uh, funny or something like that, which is great. But ultimately, if that title doesn't contain the keywords that you're trying to target, then it's not going to get as much legs. So you just, you need to put yourself in your customer's shoes really and think about if I was Googling for the answer to my question, and this was the, you know, this bit of content was the answer to the question, what would I be Googling? Um, and so again, it all ties back to the, the buyer persona. Um, and uh, yeah, the last thing is probably just to, even though, you know, you've got to pay attention to the data, not to get too bogged down, because at the end of the day, it still should be a fun, creative process. And sometimes you just get a flash of inspiration and that's the thing that can go viral so it's it's uh like i said at the beginning really having a balance between the data and the creativity evie Jornston from content boost you better share your new website um i know you're <laughs> the same domain um, yeah. but you've totally rebranded and relaunched your website where can people find out more about you yes yeah, so yeah it's contentboost.co.uk Great. Well, listen, have a great day. I'm off to repurpose this video podcast. <laughs> and, <blog post. laughs> great and, and thank you for joining me on GSV Talks Digital. Thanks so much for having me, Joanne. Great to speak to you.